Unbinylium, also known as aca radium or simply element 120, is the hypothetical chemical element in the periodic table with symbol UBN and atomic number 120. Unbinylium and UBN are the temporary systematic IUPAC name and symbol, until a permanent name is decided upon. In the periodic table of the elements, it is expected to be an S-block element, an alkaline earth metal, and the second element in the eighth period. It has attracted attention because of some predictions that it may be in the island of stability, although newer calculations expect the island to actually occur at a slightly lower atomic number, closer to copernicium and fluorovium. Unbinylium has not yet been synthesized, despite multiple attempts from German and Russian teams. One 2011 attempt from the German team at the GSI Helmholtz Center for Heavy Ion Research had a suggestive but not conclusive result suggesting the possible production of 299 UBN, but the data was incomplete and did not match theoretical expectations. Planned attempts from Russian, Japanese, and French teams are scheduled for 2017-2020. Experimental evidence from these attempts show that the period 8 elements would likely be far more difficult to synthesize than the previous known elements, and that unbinylium may even be the last element that can be synthesized with current technology. Unbinylium's position as the seventh alkaline earth metal suggests that it would have similar properties to its lighter congeners, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium, however, relativistic effects may cause some of its properties to differ from those expected from a straight application of periodic trends. For example, unbinylium is expected to be less reactive than barium and radium and be closer in behavior to strontium, and while it should show the characteristic plus 2 oxidation state of the alkaline earth metals, it is also predicted to show the plus 4 oxidation state unknown in any other alkaline earth metal. History Transactinide elements, such as unbinylium, are produced by nuclear fusion. These fusion reactions can be divided into hot and cold fusion, depending on the excitation energy of the compound nucleus produced. In hot fusion reactions, very light, high-energy projectiles are accelerated toward very heavy targets actinides, giving rise to compound nuclei at high excitation energy approximately 40 to 50 MeV that may fission, or alternatively evaporate several 3 to 5 neutrons. In cold fusion reactions which use heavier projectiles, typically from the fourth period, and lighter targets, usually lead and bismuth, the fused nuclei produced have a relatively low excitation energy approximately 10 to 20 MeV, which decreases the probability that these products will undergo fission reactions. As the fused nuclei cool to the ground state, they require emission of only one or two neutrons. However, hot fusion reactions tend to produce more neutron-rich products because the actinides have the highest neutron-to-proton ratios of any elements that can presently be made in macroscopic quantities, and is currently the only method to produce the superheavy elements from fluorovium element 114 onward. Ununenium and unbinylium elements 119 and 120 are the lightest elements that have not yet been synthesized. All the preceding elements have been synthesized, culminating in oganesson element 118 the heaviest known element, which completes the seventh row of the periodic table. Attempts to synthesize elements 119 and 120 push the limits of current technology, due to the decreasing cross-sections of the production reactions and their probably short half-lives, expected to be on the order of microseconds. Heavier elements would likely be too short-lived to be detected with current technology, they would decay within a microsecond, before reaching the detectors, previously, important help characterized as silver bullets. In the synthesis of superheavy elements came from the deformed nuclear shells around hassium-270 which increased the stability of surrounding nuclei, and the existence of the quasi-stable neutron-rich isotope calcium-48 which could be used as a projectile to produce more neutron-rich isotopes of superheavy elements. The more neutron-rich a superheavy nuclide is, the closer it is expected to be to the sought-after island of stability. Even so, the synthesized isotopes still have fewer neutrons than those expected to be in the island of stability. 
Furthermore, using calcium-48 to synthesize unbinylium would require a target of fermium-257, which cannot yet be produced in large enough quantities only picograms can presently be produced. In comparison, milligrams of berkelium and californium are available, and would in any case have a lower yield than using an Einsteinium target with calcium-48 projectiles to produce unionenium. More practical production of further superheavy elements would require projectiles heavier than 48 Ca, but this has the drawback of resulting in more symmetrical fusion reactions that are colder and less likely to succeed. Synthesis attempts Past Following their success in obtaining oganesson by the reaction between 249 CF and 48 CA in 2006, the team at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna started similar experiments in hope of creating unbinylium from nuclei of 58 Fe and 244 Pu. Isotopes of unbinylium are predicted to have alpha decay half-lives of the order of microseconds. In March to April 2007, the synthesis of unbinylium was attempted at the JINR by bombarding a plutonium-244 target with iron-58 ions. Initial analysis revealed that no atoms of element 120 were produced providing a limit of 400 Fb for the cross-section at the energy studied. 24,494 Pu plus 5,826 Fe 302,120 UBN asterisk no atoms The Russian team planned to upgrade their facilities before attempting the reaction again. In April 2007, the team at the GSI Helmholtz Center for Heavy Ion Research in Darmstadt, Germany attempted to create unbinylium using uranium 238 and nickel 64. 23892U plus 6428Ni 302120UBN asterisk no atoms No atoms were detected providing a limit of 1.6 pb on the cross section at the energy provided. The GSI repeated the experiment with higher sensitivity in three separate runs from April to May 2007, January to March 2008, and September to October 2008, all with negative results and providing a cross section limit of 90 Fb. In August October 2011, a different team at the GSI using the Tosca facility tried a new, even more asymmetrical reaction. 24,998 CF plus 5,022 T 299,120 UBN asterisk no atoms because of its asymmetry. The reaction between 249 CF and 50 T was predicted to be the most favorable practical reaction for synthesizing unbinylium, although it is also somewhat cold and is further away from the neutron shell closure at n equals 184 than any of the other three reactions attempted. No unbinylium atoms were identified, implying a limiting cross-section of 200 Fb. Jens Volkerkratz predicted the actual maximum cross-section for producing unbinylium by any of the four reactions 238U plus 64 Ni, 244 Pu plus 58 Fe, 248 Cm plus 54 Cr, or 249 Cf plus 50 T to be around 0.1 Fb. In comparison, the world record for the smallest cross-section of a successful reaction was 30 Fb for the reaction 209 by 70 Zn, N, 178 NH, and Kratz predicted a maximum cross-section of 20 Fb for producing ununenium. If these predictions are accurate, then synthesizing ununenium would be at the limits of current technology, and synthesizing unbinylium would require new methods. Possible observation in 2011, after upgrading their equipment to allow the use of more radioactive targets, scientists at the GSI attempted the rather asymmetrical fusion reaction 24,896 cm plus 5,424 cr 302,120 UBN asterisk no atoms It was expected that the change in reaction would quintuple the probability of synthesizing unbinylium, as the yield of such reactions is strongly dependent on their asymmetry. 
Although this reaction is less asymmetric than the 249 CF plus 5 OT reaction, it also creates more neutron-rich unbinylium isotopes that should receive increased stability for lying nearer the shell closure at n equals 184. Three correlated signals were observed on the 18th of May 2011 that matched the predicted alpha decay energies of 299 UBN and its daughter 295 Og, as well as the experimentally known decay energy of its granddaughter 291 L. V. The decay chain could thus be interpreted as beginning from 299 UBN and undergoing four successive alpha decays to the spontaneously fissioning 283 CN, with the final alpha from 287 Florida having been missed. The observed lifetimes for 287 Florida and 283 CN were rather longer than those measured and accepted for those isotopes and 279 Ds, but agree well with those measured at Dubna in an early 1999 experiment aimed at synthesizing 287 Florida. Both these chains may originate from isomeric states, or the electron capture of 287 Florida leading to 287 NH and its spontaneously fissioning daughter 283 RG. However, the results could not be confirmed due to lack of beam time, even though the probability that the observations were due to accidental coincidence were calculated as 4 times 10 minus 8. Planned The team at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, Russia, is planning to begin new experiments on the synthesis of unbinylium using the 249 CF plus 5 OT reaction in 2019-2020 using a new experimental complex. The team at Riken in Japan also plans to make an attempt on element 120 in 2017 through 2020 with 248 cm targets using the 248 cm plus 54 CR reactions. The team at GANIL in France also plans to search for heavy isotopes of existing super heavy elements and the new element unbinylium in 2019 and 2020 using 244 PU and 248 cm targets. Also in 2020, the JINR plans to use a mixed isotope 249-251 CF target and a 50T beam to aim for the isotope 298 UBN. Radioactive rubidium beams can be produced since 2015 at CERN's HIE Isolde apparatus with sufficient intensity to consider the production of element 120 in the reaction of rubidium beams with a bismuth 209 target in a cold fusion reaction. In particular, the use of 95 RB would allow the neutron shell at N equals 184 to be reached. The laboratories at Riken in Japan and at the JINR in Russia are best suited to these experiments as they are the only ones in the world where long beam times are accessible for reactions with such low predicted cross sections. Naming Using Mendeleev's nomenclature for unnamed and undiscovered elements, unbinylium should be known as Aka radium. Using the 1979 IUPAC recommendations, the element should be temporarily called unbinylium symbol UBN until it is discovered, the discovery is confirmed, and a permanent name chosen. Although unbinylium is widely used in the chemical community on all levels, from chemistry classrooms to advanced textbooks, scientists who work theoretically or experimentally on superheavy elements typically call it element 120. With the symbol E120, 120, 120, or 120. Predicted properties Nuclear stability and isotopes The stability of nuclei decreases greatly with the increase in atomic number after curium, element 96, whose half life is four orders of magnitude longer than that of any currently known higher numbered element. All isotopes with an atomic number above 101 undergo radioactive decay with half-lives of less than 30 hours. No elements with atomic numbers above 82 after lead have stable isotopes. Nevertheless, because of reasons not yet well understood, there is a slight increase of nuclear stability around atomic numbers 110 to 114, which leads to the appearance of what is known in nuclear physics as the island of stability. This concept, proposed by University of California professor Glenn Seaborg, explains why superheavy elements last longer than predicted. In a quantum tunneling model with mass estimates from a macroscopic microscopic model, the alpha decay half lives of several unbinylium isotopes 292 to 304 UBN have been predicted to be around 1 to 20 microseconds. 
Some heavier isotopes may be more stable. Fricke and Weber predicted 320 UBN to be the most stable unbinylium isotope in 1971. Since unbinylium is expected to decay via a cascade of alpha decays leading to spontaneous fission around copernicium, the total half-lives of unbinylium isotopes are also predicted to be measured in microseconds. This has consequences for the synthesis of unbinylium, as isotopes with half-lives below one microsecond would decay before reaching the detector. Nevertheless, new theoretical models show that the expected gap in energy between the proton orbitals 2f7 halves filled at element 114 and 2f5 halves filled at element 120 is smaller than expected, so that element 114 no longer appears to be a stable spherical closed nuclear shell, and this energy gap may increase the stability of elements 119 and 120. The next doubly magic nucleus is now expected to be around the spherical 306 UBB element 122, but the expected low half-life and low production cross-section of this nuclide makes its synthesis challenging, given that element 120 fills the 2f5 halves proton orbital, much attention has been given to the compound nucleus 302 UBN asterisk and its properties. Several experiments have been performed between 2000 and 2008 at the Flarev Laboratory of Nuclear Reactions in Dubna studying the fission characteristics of the compound nucleus 302 UBN**. Two nuclear reactions have been used, namely 244 Pu plus 58 Fe and 238 U plus 64 Ni. The results have revealed how nuclei such as this fission predominantly by expelling closed shell nuclei such as 132 Sn Z equals 50, N equals 82. It was also found that the yield for the fusion fission pathway was similar between 48 Ca and 58 Fe projectiles, indicating a possible future use of 58 Fe projectiles in super heavy element formation. In 2008, the team at GANIL, France, described the results from a new technique which attempts to measure the fission half life of a compound nucleus at high excitation energy, since the yields are significantly higher than from neutron evaporation channels. It is also a useful method for probing the effects of shell closures on the survivability of compound nuclei in the super-heavy region, which can indicate the exact position of the next proton shell Z equals 114, 120, 124, or 126. The team studied the nuclear fusion reaction between uranium ions and a target of natural nickel, 23892U plus Nat 28 Ni 296298299300, 302120 UBN Fission. The results indicated that nuclei of unbinylium were produced at high approximately 70 MeV excitation energy, which underwent fission with measurable half-lives just over 10-18 S. Although very short indeed, insufficient for the element to be considered by IUPAC to exist, because a compound nucleus has no internal structure and its nucleons have not been arranged into shells until it has survived for 10-14 s, upon which it forms an electronic cloud, the ability to measure such a process indicates a strong shell effect at Z equals 120. At lower excitation energy see neutron evaporation, the effect of the shell will be enhanced and ground state nuclei can be expected to have relatively long half-lives. This result could partially explain the relatively long half-life of 294 AUG measured in experiments at Dubna. Similar experiments have indicated a similar phenomenon at element 124 but not for fluorovium, suggesting that the next proton shell does in fact lie beyond element 120. In September 2007, the team at Riken began a program utilizing 248 cm targets and have indicated future experiments to probe the possibility of 120 being the next proton magic number and 184 being the next neutron magic number using the aforementioned nuclear reactions to form 302 UBN asterisk, as well as 248 cm plus 54 cr. They also plan to further chart the region by investigating the nearby compound nuclei 296 AUG**, 298 AUG**, 306 UBB**, and 308 UBB**. Atomic and physical Being the second period 8 element, unbinylium is predicted to be an alkaline earth metal, below beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. 
Each of these elements has two valence electrons in the outermost s orbital valence electron configuration ns2 which is easily lost in chemical reactions to form the plus 2 oxidation state thus the alkaline earth metals are rather reactive elements with the exception of beryllium due to its small size unvinylium is predicted to continue the trend and have a valence electron configuration of ns2 it is therefore expected to behave much like its lighter congeners, however, it is also predicted to differ from the lighter alkaline earth metals in some properties. The main reason for the predicted differences between unbinylium and the other alkaline earth metals is the spin orbit so interaction. The mutual interaction between the electrons. Motion and spin. The SA interaction is especially strong for the superheavy elements because their electrons move faster at velocities comparable to the speed of light than those in lighter atoms. In unbinylium atoms, it lowers the 7p and 8s electron energy levels, stabilizing the corresponding electrons, but two of the 7p electron energy levels are more stabilized than the other four. The effect is called subshell splitting, as it splits the 7p subshell into more stabilized and the less stabilized parts. Computational chemists understand the split as a change of the second azimuthal quantum number L from 1 to 1 half and 3 halves for the more stabilized and less stabilized parts of the 7p subshell, respectively. Thus, the outer 8s electrons of unbinylium are stabilized and become harder to remove than expected, while the 7p3 halves electrons are correspondingly destabilized, perhaps allowing them to participate in chemical reactions. This stabilization of the outermost s orbital already significant in radium is the key factor affecting unbinylium s chemistry, and causes all the trends for atomic and molecular properties of alkaline earth metals to reverse direction after barium. Due to the stabilization of its outer 8s electrons, unbinylium's first ionization energy the energy required to remove an electron from a neutral atom is predicted to be 6.0 electron volts, comparable to that of calcium. The electron of the hydrogen-like unbinylium atom oxidized so it has only one electron, UBN 119 plus is predicted to move so quickly that its mass is 2.05 times that of a non-moving electron, a feature coming from the relativistic effects. For comparison, the figure for hydrogen-like radium is 1.30 and the figure for hydrogen-like barium is 1.095. According to simple extrapolations of relativity laws, that indirectly indicates the contraction of the atomic radius to around 200 pm, very close to that of strontium 215 pm. The ionic radius of the UBN2 plus ion is also correspondingly lowered to 160 pm. The trend in electron affinity is also expected to reverse direction similarly at radium and unbinylium. Unbinylium should be a solid at room temperature, with melting point 680 degrees Celsius. This continues the downward trend down the group, being lower than the value 700 degrees Celsius for radium. The boiling point of unbinylium is expected to be around 1,700 degrees Celsius, which is lower than that of all the previous elements in the group in particular, radium boils at 1,737 degrees Celsius, following the downward periodic trend. The density of unbinylium has been predicted to be 7 g per cc, continuing the trend of increasing density down the group, the value for radium is 5.5 g per cc. Chemical. The chemistry of unbinylium is predicted to be similar to that of the alkaline earth metals, but it would probably behave more like calcium or strontium than barium or radium. Like strontium, unbinylium should react vigorously with air to form an oxide and with water to form the hydroxide O2, which would be a strong base, and releasing hydrogen gas. It should also react with the halogens to form salts such as UBNCl2. While these reactions would be expected from periodic trends, their lowered intensity is somewhat unusual, as ignoring relativistic effects, periodic trends would predict unbinylium to be even more reactive than barium or radium. This lowered reactivity is due to the relativistic stabilization of unbinylium's valence electron, increasing unbinylium. 
S first ionization energy and decreasing the metallic and ionic radii. This effect is already seen for radium. The chemistry of unbinylium in the plus two oxidation state should be more similar to the chemistry of strontium than to that of radium. On the other hand, the ionic radius of the UBN2 plus ion is predicted to be larger than that of senior 2 plus, because the 7p orbitals are destabilized and are thus larger than the p orbitals of the lower shells. Unbinylium may also show the plus 4 oxidation state, which is not seen in any other alkaline earth metal, in addition to the plus 2 oxidation state that is characteristic of the other alkaline earth metals and is also the main oxidation state of all the known alkaline earth metals. This is because of the destabilization and expansion of the 7p3 have spinor, causing its outermost electrons to have a lower ionization energy than what would otherwise be expected. The plus 1 state may also be stable in isolation. Many unbinylium compounds are expected to have a large covalent character, due to the involvement of the 7p3 halves electrons in the bonding. This effect is also seen to a lesser extent in radium, which shows some 6s and 6p3 halves contribution to the bonding in radium fluoride, radium fluoride and astatide, riot 2, resulting in these compounds having more covalent character. The standard reduction potential of the UBN2 plus, UBN couple is predicted to be 2.9 V. In the gas phase, the alkaline earth metals do not usually form covalently bonded diatomic molecules like the alkali metals do, since such molecules would have the same number of electrons in the bonding and antibonding orbitals and would have very low dissociation energies. Thus, the MM bonding in these molecules is predominantly through van der Waals forces. The metal-metal bond lengths in these M2 molecules increase down the group from Ca2 to UBN2. On the other hand, their metal-metal bond dissociation energies generally increase from Ca2 to Ba2 and then drop precipitously to UBN2, which should be the most weakly bound of all the group 2 homodiatomic molecules. The cause of this trend is the increasing participation of the P3 halves and D electrons as well as the relativistically contracted S orbital. From these M2 dissociation energies, the enthalpy of sublimation delta HSUB of unbinylium is predicted to be 150 kJ per mole. The UBNO bond should be the weakest of all bonds between gold and an alkaline earth metal, but should still be stable. This gives extrapolated medium-sized adsorption enthalpies minus delta hads of 172 kJ per mole on gold the radium value should be 237 kJ per mole and 50 kJ per mole on silver, the smallest of all the alkaline earth metals, that demonstrate that it would be feasible to study the chromatographic adsorption of unbinylium onto surfaces made of noble metals. The delta HSUB and minus delta hads values are correlated for the alkaline earth metals. See also Island of stability, fluorovium unbinylium unbihexium Notes References, <references>